In this video, we'll look at graphing the parent functions y equals x and y equals x squared. The first one, of course, being the line, and the second one being the quadratic. Well, when we go to graph the equation of a line, we'll make a table of values. We'll choose some x's and some y's. You want to choose small, easy numbers to make your life easy. And we know that the line goes through 0, 0. That is, if x equals 0, y equals 0. So I'm going to choose some positive integers and some negative integers. You can choose anything you want. You could have chosen a decimal or a fraction. But why not make your life easy and pick easy numbers? And of course, the line is easy in that whatever you chose for x, y is just the same thing. So if x equals 1, y equals 1. x equals 2, y equals 2. x equals 3, y equals 3. And similarly for the negative numbers, whatever x is, y is the same thing. So we can now make that into a graph. Let's start by putting arrows on our graph, indicating that the x and y axis goes on forever. And let's label that x and y axis. That's an x axis. That's the y axis. Let's also indicate our scale. I'll put a tick every two, just to help the reader see what the scale is. Ooh, I skipped one there. And you'll know that when you're labeling graphs with me, I don't need you to label every single thing, but I like to see at least every second tick labeled. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is 2, 4, 6, 8. This is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And this is negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. So when we go to make this, we're going to graph we can start with the negatives, so negative 3, negative 3, put a dot, negative 2, negative 2, put a dot, negative 1, negative 1, put a dot, a dot at 0, 0, a dot at 1, 1, a dot at 2, 2, a dot at 3, 3. Did you need that many lines? No. You probably could have got away with just a few points. You didn't need that many points, but why not, right? We're just making sure we had a nice full graph, and to compare it with the next graph, the quadratic. So we've got our points, and I was just grabbing a ruler. Now we can connect the dots, a steady line, connect them, put arrows to show this line goes on forever, and label it y equals x, the line. Notice that when I drew my line, I put arrows on the line as well to show it goes on forever, and I labeled its equation y equals x. When you go to make the table for quadratic, we'll use the same x values just to compare. Because we know the quadratic parent function, y equals x squared, the vertex is at 0, 0. So again, we'll pick easy x's. We can pick anything we want, but let's pick small integers on either side of the vertex. And now to make this table, to get the y values, we picked our small x's on either side of the vertex. Now we just square them. What's 1 squared? Just 1. What's 2 squared? 4. What's 3 squared? 9. The same thing happens with the negative numbers. What's negative 1 squared? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, or squaring a number makes it positive, as well as multiplying by itself. So what's negative 2 squared? That's negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. What's negative 3 squared? Positive 9. And now when we put these points on the graph, negative 3, positive 9, negative 2, positive 4, negative 1, positive 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and x-axis over 3, and up to 9 on y. We get a totally different shape. When we connect these dots, we're going to do our best to make a nice U-shaped curve, the shape of a parabola, of course. And we make sure to make a nice U shape here. As you come around, don't want it to look like a V, but rather a U. And there's a parabola. Y equals X squared. Again, I label it. Erase any inconsistency I had here, just to make it look as best I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to do our best just to show as good of a U as we can. And there you have the graph of the parent functions, y equals x, the line, 
and y equals x squared, the quadratic.